Well, another year, another Steam summer sale over with, and another month I forget to put a video out. So for this episode of Flash Reviews, I've gone through the great big haul of games I got in the Steam summer sales this year and picked 10 of them as my summer sale picks of 2019, based on the 10 award categories currently on screen. Note that these are exclusively my personal preferences and are limited to games that I bought in the sales, so if you have your own picks, then feel free to let me know in the comments below or in my Discord server, link in the description. The Most Visually Impressive Game Award goes to Just Shapes and Beats. Much as this game's title suggests, this game involves shapes and beats, i.e. you're a shape of some sort and you had to avoid getting caught by the Danmarku-esque visualisations of a banging chiptune slash dubstep soundtrack by a load of people you've probably never heard of, though they are still bangers nevertheless. The gameplay is pretty challenging, if in some cases relatively easy to cheese, but what makes it stand out is how each and every song has its own different visualisation for you to gawp at while trying to dodge the bullets being thrown at you. The art style is simple yet colourful, with a lot of bright magenta in there to reflect the simple story mode's main antagonist, and it couples with the snappy way in which the visualisations move to create some really memorable art. Fun to play, fun to listen to, and most importantly, a whole lot of fun to look at in spite of its self-confessed simplicity, Just Shapes and Beats scoops up this award with ease. The award for the most challenging game goes to Baba Is You. The title of this game comes from its main mechanic. The rules of the game world are laid out in sentences made up of physical words in the world such as Baba is you, flag is win, wall is stop, etc. These rules can be influenced by building new sentences out of the words they're made out of. For instance, you can take control of different objects by designating them as you, make certain objects pushable by designating them as push, and even remove variables to make it so you can walk right through objects, the overall goal being to touch the object designated as win. This makes for some very clever puzzling which at times can get absolutely fiendish. There are several sets of levels where the next level on is the same as the last, but with the solution to the last level explicitly prevented so you have to work it out some other way. In my opinion, this is precisely what a puzzle game should be. Difficult in the good way and fun and unique in its premise, making for a greatly satisfying challenge with new twists around every corner. The award for the oddest game goes to Hypnospace Outlaw. Hypnospace Outlaw is more or less a late 90s internet simulator. It's set in an alternate 1990s in which people browse Hypnospace in their sleep, an internet-like network of areas where people can make GeoCities-esque web pages and post various content. You are a Hypnospace enforcer, out there to moderate Hypnospace's many zones for potential violations of its content laws and report them where found, all the while dealing with various late 90s internet problems. While the nostalgic field trip back into the internet of the late 90s may rather quickly wear thin for anyone without fond memories of that time, there's no doubting that there really are no other games like this. I mean, where else can you browse faithful pastiches of 90s era internet pages, good and bad, get infected by creepypasta viruses, and be annoyed by desktop helpers that only want to show you adverts? Didn't think so. The award for the game that surprised me the most goes to House Flipper. So basically, imagine if somebody took the house building mechanic from The Sims and turned it into an entire game, minus the actual building part. That is the basic gist of what House Flipper is. You are a house flipper and you're contracted to clean up, repaint and remodel manky old houses, and an additional DLC also adds a rather limited gardening option. What makes this game surprising in my mind is just how addictive it is. I went into this game not expecting much, and by the time I was wrapping up my first play of the game, I was four hours in, and at the time of writing I've sunk about half a day into it, more than any of my other Steam sale games. This is bearing in mind that it's not the best looking game, and it is literally just about renovating houses. It should be entirely unremarkable, and yet it is remarkable. Maybe it's the way the monotony of flipping houses is simplified, maybe it's the satisfaction of the end result when you see the wonderfully resurrected house, and maybe it's just your standard time sink, but nevertheless its addictiveness has more than earned House Flipper the moniker of the game that surprised me the most this sale. The award for the most humorous game goes to Devolver Bootleg. Developed by Doinksoft, also the developers of Gato Roboto, Devolver Bootleg is effectively a collection of self-parodies of Devolver digital games in the style of bootleg NES games. Just for instance, the cat from Doinksoft's own recently released Gato Roboto is now stuffed into a suit of armour and traversing a Castlevania-esque map screen, Hotline Milwaukee is a lo-fi self-pissed egg of Hotline Miami all the way down to the violent and art style, Shooty Boots is just a straight-up downwell ripoff, and Luftrousers 3 is what might have happened if Luftrousers was a Defender clone. Some of the games in the collection are actually actually kind of fun, but the entire collection makes me wonder if it's possible for an entire game to be a shitpost. Because if it is, that's more or less exactly what Devolver Bootleg is, a collection of piss takes released for a laugh, both on the part and at the expense of both themselves and the people who actually bought it at the 1% discount it had during the sales. Doing soft and Devolver, I salute you. You developed a shitpost, and I bought it. The award for the most over-the-top game goes to Mother Gunship. 
Mother Gunship is not the sort of game you hope to find when looking for a game with a particularly deep or inventive story. What it is, is a roguelike first person shooter with hilarious writing and some really, really fun combat. The basic premise is that a fleet of robot ships have taken over the Earth and you gotta stop them. And you do that by hopping into the robot ships and blasting the fear of Thor into him with a massive array of modular weaponry of your own making. At regular intervals throughout the procedurally generated levels, you encounter crafting stations where you can buy new barrels, connectors and upgrade modules and mash them together in whatever order feels good. You want a gun that fires electricity, saw blades and lava that bounces off the walls? With the right parts, you can make that happen. The result is a shooter that has mindless, over-the-top shootery down to a fine art and rivals even Borderlands for pure, unadulterated craziness. Bouncing around each level with a new gun and barrel every time with the promise of even better weaponry further down the line is a premise that takes a good while to get old. And truly, there are very few games I've played which are this over the top. The Late to the Party award for the game I've heard a lot of good things about in the past and only now decided to pick up goes to Dying Light. This game's been out for about three years now and I've heard various good things about it, so I decided to give it a whirl myself and, to say the least, I was quite impressed. Developed by Techland, developers of one of my favourite shooters ever, that being Call of Juarez Gunslinger, Dying Light is yet another zombie apocalypse game, but with a rather ingenious difference. Rather than fighting the zombies, you're encouraged instead to stay off the streets and free run around them in whatever creative ways you can think up. This ends up playing out kind of like a cross between Mirror's Edge and Techland's own Dead Island, focusing less on the combat and more on the free running aspect of things. The story is also quite good, putting a rather tense character-driven spin on the whole stuck in a city full of zombies concept that's been played within countless other games, and all in all, it's an enjoyable experience and a great find for this year's sale. The first special category award goes to Ape Out. In Ape Out, you are an ape and you have to get out of a testing facility where you're being held against your will. However, some rooms full of armed men stand between you and the exit, so you have to fight your way out in a rather gory manner, all to a dynamic jazz percussion soundtrack that reacts to the moves you make and gets faster and faster with every level. And all of this ends up coming together in a frenetic and satisfying romp as you reduce puny humans to pulp with your gorilla arms while the jazz band playing in the background and the momentum as you move through the levels keep you hyped for your next move. The whole experience is a rhythmic primal adrenaline trip which is well deserving of a spot on this list. The second special category award goes to My Friend Pedro, as in the game of course, not an actual person named Pedro. Apparently based off a 2014 Flash game with a similar premise developed by a former Media Molecule dev, Dead Toast Games' My Friend Pedro sees you controlling an unnamed masked loony who goes around killing geriatric mobsters at the behest of a sentient banana. Yes, that idea is just as bonkers as it sounds, as is the gameplay. Armed with a couple of lead spewers, your job is to murder anyone you come across in the most stylish way possible. For instance, you can bounce off walls and somersault over your enemies as you spray them with bullets, twirl around dodging enemy bullets and shooting as you do so, or even slow down time and jump out of a window while shooting two people in two different directions if you so desire. It's easily one of the wackiest games of this sale, as well as one of the most ridiculous premises I've heard of in a long time, and this works very much in its favour, making it a gloriously non nonsensical side-scroller which doesn't take itself altogether too seriously. Also, Dead Toast needs to make a Deadpool game someday, it would be criminal if they didn't. And finally, the Game of the Sale award goes to Return of the Obra Dinn. Picture the scene. It's the year 1806, and the good ship Obra Dinn, missing for two years, has been found adrift with its entire crew of 60 people dead. It's your job to deduce what happened with the help of a mysterious pocket watch that lets you see the last few seconds of a corpse's life and identify the fates of all the people that set out on that voyage. What's amazing about this game is the way that it tells a gripping story in tiny little out-of-order fragments. Every single memory you read and scan through hints at a little more of what was going on aboard the ship and teases at what happens next, making you really, really want to know what happened, to deduce who each of these people was, what they were there for, how and why they died. It's certainly an unconventional method of telling a story and a well-executed one at that, not quite telling you anything at one time, so you have to put it together yourself and the result is truly fascinating. I also applaud the absolutely gorgeous voice work in this game, with a wide variety of actors, accents and nationalities represented and all absolutely amazingly acted. And for those reasons, I've named Return of the Obra Dinn as my game of the sale. And that is all for my highlights of the Steam Summer Sale 2019. Thank you very much for watching, be sure to like, share and subscribe, join my Discord server, link below, leave a comment if you liked it, leave a comment if you didn't like it, either way it means a lot to me, be sure to ring the little bell by the subscribe button so you know when I've uploaded, and I'll see you all next time. Ta-ta!